Hi guys, Scott here from Outlaw Garage. We are back at Zuffin House for a tour of a 911 that has appeared in a plethora of Target Tazzies. Fully restored now, so let's take a tour of the car. We're with Mike, we're back at Zuffin House. We wandered past this car uh, a few times as it's been through its different stages. Yes, yeah, yeah, and it's been here. Oh, it's been here quite a, you know, it's been here. Oh, I don't know, six months, nearly a year, I think, here with Kane and um it was the body was done up by um by skunk works down at colac and um when the um it, it was originally a we used it at, in targa it wasn't my car it was um Fred's yeah car. okay and he decided that he's had enough of targa and he wanted to put it back to road use so he, he cut the roll cage out and there was rust in it and it spent <coughs> Oh, six months, twelve months down at Skunk Works while they worked on it, and then they did all the body work. And then once Paul decided to sell it, I thought would it be a good idea to buy it because the motor wasn't blinged up, gearbox needed to be rebuilt, the dash needed being to be done, and the gauges need to be restored and the inside the bonnet and all the suspension the suspension was good but yeah, it just okay. needed to be painted up okay and made it look nice and it's the same with inside we put a new tank in it um and so we came to, to an agreement and i bought the car and um it's been a hobby for the last year and a half is to get it back to this condition yeah because you're as well as skunk works have done some work kane's been working on it You've yes. been down here as well, yep. working on it, because I've walked past you and your head's in it at some point, working on it as well. Well, I'm not a mechanic, I'm retired, and, but I just love working on cars and it's been a good hobby for me. So the gearbox needed to be um, reconditioned and uh, Clemmy did that. And it was a bit hard, typical synchros in a 915 gearbox, but they were gone. And um, so we changed a few cogs in the gearbox, it's beautiful now. and. Um, and then we took all, we didn't actually strip the motor because the motor itself is okay, but we took all the um, tinware off it and yellow zinc bits and pieces of it and yeah. we did all the carbies and the carbies um, aqua blasted and cleaned up and refurbished and here it is now the way it is now. Put a different set of wheels on it. <clears throat> Instead of the 15s, I put the 16s on it, mainly for looks because it's, it's not a matching numbers car. Um, it's got a 2.7 in it. The base car is a 90, 1971T, um, but it's got it's an RS clone. So oh, because I, I was going to say, the way you were talking about it earlier, I kind of thought it might have been like an early SC, but a 71T. T, it was 70, it's a 71T. Ah, it's actually okay. an English car. Came ah, from England. Okay. And um, so it's an original right hand drive, but an English delivered car. Yep. And um, it was done up as an RS clone. And um, so I think I had a bit of, my opinion was I got a bit of a latitude with it to not having exactly factory because it's not a matching numbers car. It's got box to brakes on the front. Oh, okay. And um, so it's a really good, can you use the word outlaw? I don't know, but it's, it's a really good, it's something you want, upgrade the bits and pieces that probably weren't as good in the original car to make it something like a really good street racer. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't I wasn't too sure of the history behind the car, and it has done a lot of Targa yeah. rallies, and yeah, yeah. We, he's had a bit of history, hasn't well, it, we, over the years? Well, done Targa rallies. I can't, don't know how many it's done, but it's done quite a quite a lot. It would have done probably ten at least, I think, and then it had done uh, Mount Buller, High oh. Country. So it's had a pretty good, you know, it's had a pretty rugged life. Yeah. But like all things can, you know, give it a bit of love and nurturing and it comes back to something like this. And was this the colour that it was always or? No, it wasn't always this colour. This is the original colour. Yep. Um, and it was a blue colour, a metallic blue at one stage. And when mate Paul bought it, it was blue. And then he put it back to um, the orange and then when they redid it, they did the paintwork properly. Yeah, because the paintwork is the paintwork on the car is absolutely lovely. I think we've got some side views of it already, but that's a uh, the the colour really suits the car. Yeah, it's a great colour. You don't yeah, know it is. How many yeah, people 
um, like the colour. And you only have to look around the workshop here to see some of the colours that came out of the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Yeah. Whereas, you know, unless you have a GT3 these days, you don't get a wild colour. No, and it is... We've been here at Zuffin House before. There is normally a Skittles coloured collection of yeah. uh, cars yeah. here, and it's th this always um, caught our eye because, um, yeah, it looks lovely. We will open her up and look around her because I think the engine bay is a little bit special, but this has the classic re retrofit air conditioner as well. Like we said, it's got the box to brakes. There's a little bit more to this car than just. It, there's some modern twists on an yeah. old 911. Yeah, yeah, and it's, the, the suspension is quite firm on it because we didn't haven't changed the suspension from the target days. Yeah, which, okay. Which, which makes it a bit firmer, but I love it like that. It really uh, makes it enjoyable. I'd imagine drive. it sticks to the road because yes. the suspension's yes. the same as back in the target days. Yes. Then yes. that's a exactly right glue to the road. Yeah. So you're saying this is a 2.7? 2.7, yep. Um, on carbies, as you can see. Yeah. Yeah, there's been some work there, hasn't there? And have you had it dyno Uh Look, I, Paul, originally I think about 270 horsepower, I think. Okay. I, I could be wrong, but which I'm- Which is good. I, yeah, which I, I need to confirm that. Yeah, the, the, carbies, so the carbies certainly give it a lot of um, go, particularly, you know, it's really responsive on the throttle with the carbies. Yeah, but it's got a beautiful sound as well. Yeah. And but as you can see, there's the, I guess the... Fuse box. Yeah, the common. upgrade from uh, the classic retrofit yes. as well. Yeah. It'll have the bigger alternator because we'll come to the air, right. air conditioning at yep. the front in a moment. Yeah, I bet that's got quite a hum about it. That's oh, fantastic. Wow. And then we changed the, um, we've got the, it's a, it's a locally made muffler on it. But yeah, the, okay. we, we changed these pipes, the pipes are small and fainting down, so we chopped them up and fit them and just brought them out like that, which is... Yeah, let's see if we can take Yeah. Yeah, they are a small muffler, aren't they? I don't yeah. think we can not nice and kind of see under there. Yeah, I bet it's got a beautiful tone. Just as we were looking through the engine bay, I'm kind of looking down here, there's a pipe here, and then it goes all the way to the back there. I think we can get that perhaps in focus, but a big catch can there as well. So when they're bombing through on the Targa rallies, at least it kind of catches the oil. Saying it was a little bit full when you rebuilt the engine? Oh, oh when we took the engine out, but that, <coughs> it hadn't been pulled out in, you know, six or seven years, so you could add a little something. bit of oil in it. <laughs> <laughs> Not an uncommon issue. Ah, uh, fiberglass bonnet, so the wings are steel, are they? Oh, uh, yeah, everything's steel except the bonnet and the um, ducktail. And the ducktail, of course. So you can see what we've, this had, it's a new tank in there because the other tank in its days, the rallying days, has been bent like all old Porsches, it had a ding every here and there. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it did. And, um, it's, but the tank had a bit of a ding in it and so we decided to put a new tank in it. Yeah. Um, and you can see that's the electric air conditioning down in here. Yeah, so that's in there. And all the wiring for it there, and then of course, and consequently all of it up there. Yeah, consequently, there's a lot more wiring in the car due to the yeah due to the um, air conditioning pipes and so on. Yeah, there's a bit more to it, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, but I don't think it's a heavy unit, is it? It's just no, it's not. It's no, no, no. I mean, all that is uh, is that the condenser box, like they call it. Yeah. Um, no, that's very light, but we had to put some extra. Um, tape on there because it was leaking. They leak out the side here on both sides. Yeah, okay. So we just put that on, but you can see all the. And I did paint all these up and. Yeah. The flaps and so on. Had to change the water bottle because the water bottle is normally down in here. Ah, yeah. 
and then it was in the front here, but then it was too close to the spare wheel. Yeah. So I got bought another one and just mounted up on out of the way there. It's all those little things that once you start changing something and moving exactly. it around and yep. then how it all kind of fits together and because before you know it, you've got to budge things around a little bit. When, we, when we're targeting it, we didn't have that spare wheel in there, so there's more room and so the water bottle was up the front to pick the weight, you know, help all the weight up the front. Yeah. And, but now it's a road car. We had to put the spare wheel back in it and the, so we had to find a place for the water bottle. So if, that's actually a decent spot for it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Some, I noticed the other day, some people will actually um, screw them into that cover, but... Yeah, I don't mind that sat no. there, to be honest with you. I think that's what looks all right, and it's kind of nice to have that cover clean. I think it, it looks genuinely like it should be there from factory. Yeah. By the time, the, you know, we you put the carpet over, you don't see any of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But sometimes I think it's best to have it, cut, have it like that so you can see it. Yeah, and I don't know if we picked up the engine mounts on the rear very well, but ran, uh, the suspension mounts and engine mounts, but just here, they're... Um, They've all been yellow zinc. Yeah. Tidied up. It just makes a massive difference when you're, when you're looking at it. It's the small details that make a... Yeah, look, that, I think that that's difference. a thing. You, when, if, when you, it's amazing if you don't have those little things done up, your eye picks them up and you say, oh, that's a bit shitty. Yeah. Mm. And if you're going to spend the time and effort on it, yes. like I said, it's the majority of these kind of thing is, is the hours of taking it apart, putting it back together. The actual zinc plating, because they're only just around the corner That's here, right. it's, yeah. it's a drop in the ocean <laughs> compared to the rest of it, isn't it? So we've had a bit of a look around the outside, uh, the engine bay in the front, but we'll have a look at the interior now. RS door cards. These fit really nicely because on my 938 and the SC, mine do not fit nicely at all. It might just be that they're old and weathered, but they they fit really nice. So all of the um, gauges have been re restored, refurbished. They look brand new. Look at those. I guess if you put a brand new dash in, we'll see. The dash at the top, that's original, that hasn't changed. Oh, so that's original. That's original. But this, I painted, I painted all this area in here. Yep. The gauge have been, gauges have been restored. We've got new aluminium bits out of the States. Um, ah, okay. Uh, and then at this new basket weave, I think that's Sierra, Sierra collection. Yeah. And then had these re, re-covered. The knee pads recovered because that's made a massive difference to the dash yeah and who did your gauges for you um bloke up the road and um howard instruments wow and then there's the new um uh the throttle controls the uh air, the heater controls oh uh, yeah little panel i think that's from sierra collection and then i put a digital an old time digital radio in it so it looks like an original radio but yeah, it's digital. I was going to wander around the other side and have a bit of a look at that because that did look nice. Seats? They are repros out of Italy. Yeah okay. They're a very nice touch as well. I think that uh, looking from the outside of the car in the orange and then you get a glimpse of the oh, hound's yeah. tooth on the seat it looks really really nice. That but simple things touch. like, you know, we're talking about the new, just the new gear knob. I was going to keep the old one, but it looked a little bit ratty. Yep. So, you know, they're not expensive and little things like that. No, it the makes a... knobs on the heater and the hand throttle. Those minor things make a lot of difference. Yeah, oh, I think so. So there's a shifter in focus. There we go. But that radio there looks really nice. Is it one of the like um, it's, it's out of retro Sydney. sound or something yes, like that? Yes, that's it from Sydney. Yeah. It was, I think an American, but I think they're made in America. But yeah, there's a mob in Sydney that handles. And he's uh, like you said on those uh, the knobs on the heating and cooling. That is really nice. Yeah, well that was he's a whole. Done a great job there. That was a whole new. It used the, the guts of it was the original, but all yeah. the fascia is new. Yeah, he's done a really and good job. And then these these bits here are all new. Yeah, it just those small touches again 
They make a massive And difference. trying to line them up too. I tried to line them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit finicky, I'd imagine. Yeah. But yeah, headline is lovely. And the back seat area with like the back seat delete. I think we can see that yeah, through there. Some people say you should maybe put all the back seat stuff in it, but. Oh, I, I like that. what you've done there. I think that, yeah. I, think I that's like that. I do genuinely think that looks really nice. Because sometimes as well, it just actually makes it. Look, I don't think many people. Of all the Porsches I've had, I've only ever used it once with people in the back. Yeah, so and, you, that, and that gives you a bit more space when you're going away for a weekend or something, you can throw extra stuff yeah. in it. I actually really like that, I think that's good. So, so plans for it next? Well. What's, what is next? Because well, what is next? No, well, I'm actually going to sell it because I've, um, I want to buy something else and do another project. Ah, okay. So the bugs bitten you on doing the resto. Yeah, okay. And and I've got I've got you know it's not the only Porsche I've got. So and I'm not a collector, but but it was a it was a the thrill of doing it up. And um and then it, a lot of my mates have said, well, why don't you keep it? We spent all this time doing it up, and now you're going to sell it. But the original plan was well. I do it up and sell it, then find another project and go on to the next project. Yeah, okay. And you've probably, it must be 98% of the way there, really. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, the only thing we need to do now is do a wheel alignment. Yeah. Um, get it registered, get those carpets in, the new mats in, I should say, and just do a bit more fine tuning on the motor and we're done. And you're done. Yeah. Yeah, because I think I've, it's been here a little while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it for a little while. If you're getting rid of this, yeah. then what are you thinking of doing next? Well, I think the, um, the biggest thing is to find a car. Yeah. You don't want to find a car that's too far gone. Yeah. I was very lucky with this that the bodywork was done. Um, I think... I don't really know. You've just got to hunt around and find something. Yeah. And, and it might take, it'll take time probably. Are you wanting to do another kind of Carrera or a bit of an Outlaw or a modified build or even a turbo or... Look, have you got any aspirations of what you'd like to... I, I think one of the early turbos would be fantastic to do up. Um, but I also like the long bonnet type early cars. Yeah, okay. I, fall in, I, I think they're great, you know. I'm pretty open to anything. Yeah, know. whatever air comes cool. along. It's got to be air cool yeah. though. I'm an air cool man, not a not a water cool man. And then with the box to brakes, yeah. was that? Did you do that yourself? Fit them or? No, I didn't do that. That was when when, when um, Paul set it up as a rally as a um, Targa car. Um, I, a Sean Cairns, I think, probably put the box to brakes on it. Yeah. Okay. Do you know uh, if that's much of a thing to fit? No, it's not. I don't know. I think that the master cylinder was changed. Yeah. And um, oh, and there was all oh, this is brackets made up, but I think it's quite a common uh, um, upgrade upgrade for them. Yeah, I think you can okay. get the parts out of the states or whatever. Yeah. Okay. But you know, pushing it hard in Targa, it was much better having these brakes on it than having the standard brakes on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It felt a lot more comfortable when we were racing it. There we go, there's a tour of Mix 911, a Targa Tazi veteran. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you again soon. See you guys, bye.